Hello, algebra students. Okay, so now we are working on the independent practice. There's four questions here. I don't want to do all four. Uh, so let's eliminate number four. We'll just do it one, two, and three. Okay, so number one is a good example of what I was explaining in the first lesson. It says, solve the equation 4x plus 2y equals 12 for y. So I want it to be y equals in this case. What does y equal if x equals 2? What is y equal if x equals 5? I am going to hold off on the first part. Let's work the second part. This is why it's more convenient to do what we're doing, literal equations. Because once I solve this, these two are going to be much easier. They're actually going to be calculator work. Okay. Now this one might be a little bit more difficult. So let's 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 do the algebra first before we start plugging in numbers. So I got this problem. I got 4x plus 2y equals 12. Now, I got to solve it for y. They say solve for y. Okay, so I got to get y by itself. So, okay, let's see. Well, normally I do addition and subtraction first, so I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. Okay. Well, now, I can't combine 12 and negative 4x because they're on not like terms. There's no x here. So, this goes to 0. Then I have 2y equals 12 minus 4x. Now, the second step, remember, we always did addition subtraction first if we could. Then we see 2 times y. This means multiplication. So opposite of multiplication, division, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I divide this by 2, I get y equals 12 minus 4x over 2. Now what I like about this is both of these numbers, 12 and 4, are divisible by 2. So you could do that initially if you really, really want to. Don't have to, but you can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So, But otherwise, you can leave this being just solve for x, put in your x's. I want to make this easier on myself, so I'm doing this. 12 divided by 2 is 6, minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, and bring down the x. You can leave it either way. Either one is fine with me. But now look how much easier this is. So if I want to find y when x equals 2, Some of us may be able to do this in our heads already. And if I want to find y when x equals 5, as the question says, I almost don't even need to do this in my calculator. You know what? I'm not going to because I did this. Now, this part, yeah, I'd probably do it in my calculator. This part, uh-uh. So once I fixed it and I made it easier to understand, I'm just doing a simple substitution. 2 times 2 is 4, which equals 2 times 6 minus 4, and 6 minus 4 is 2. So when x is 2, y is 2. y equals 2. Over here, 6 minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. If I know my math, otherwise I put it in the calculator, I get 6 minus 10 is minus 4. So when y is x is 5, y equals minus 4. See how once I created the formula, everything became easier. Okay, so let's cross this out. Okay, so next part. This one reminds me of the last problem. It's pretty much straight up the last problem. It's just a little, we're using different letters. This one says, solve for x, tx, minus ux equals v. Again, all numbers, all letters, no numbers. That's okay. Normally I combine like terms, x minus x. Well, t minus u, I can't give you an answer to what t minus u is yet until you give me the numbers. But I know I'm going to add them together. I'm going to do whatever this minus this number. 
When you give me what T is, when you give me what U is, I'll plug it in there and I'll know. For now, I'm not quite sure, so I'll just tell you I'm going to do that. I'm going to take T, I'm going to minus by U. Combine like terms. Equals V. So first step is we combine like terms. Next step. Well, t minus u, let's say it was 3 minus 2, eventually it's going to be a number, like 1, right? So I divide it by 1. But since t minus u, at this point, I'm going to rewrite it because I think I made a mistake here. t minus u, x equals v. I'm just going to divide both sides by whatever this number is going to become. It's going to become something in the future, but it's not really my problem. I'm setting it up for someone else to do, plug in the numbers. Get rid of those x equals v over t minus u. So now you made a formula for someone, and you said, well, if you know v, t, and u, I'll tell you what x is. All you have to do is plug in the numbers. Now, I'm going to go to the third question here. The third question here is going to deal with our exit ticket. So pay attention to this one. Got a new piece of paper for this. Okay, so I said we're crossing out four. Let's do this one in orange again. Okay, what is the height of a triangle with an area of 35 inches squared and a base of 10 inches? Well, here's the thing. You have to know something first. You have to know the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is equal one half base times height. Now, I'm going to do it this way. Other people might want to put the numbers in first, and I said I want to make this easy as possible. They want me to find the height. Okay, so that's my height at the end is going to be h equals. Okay, we can do this. All right, so I want to get h by itself. All right, so first thing I do, I want to get rid of this one half. And to get rid of a half, I can also look at this as b h over 2. So what I'm going to do is going to multiply both sides by the number 2. Because I'm saying I'm going to get rid of this 2 first. I'm going to multiply by 2. Well, this will take care of this. So now I have 2 area equals base times height. Now remember, I gotta get h by itself. Next step. Well, this is really b base times height. Times. Opposite of multiplication, division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by b. Now after I do that, you'll cross this out. And you'll see h equals 2a over b. Now, that's halfway done, but that's the hardest part. Now I'm going to make it easier on myself. Since I have this formula finding the height using area and base, i got to plug in the numbers. 2, my area is 35, over B, and B is 10. 2 times 35 equals 70. 70 divided by 10. 70 divided by 10, I put in that calculator if I don't know it, it's just seven. So the height of this triangle is just seven inches. Could I have done it with doing the algebra second? It all depends. Uh, yes. The answer is, of course, yes. But this is what I would have had to do. I would have had to say A equals one half base times height. I'll put in the numbers I know. Area equals 35 equals one half of... 10 times h. Uh, you could do both numbers at the same time. You could do them separately. At first, I can multiply both these by 2. I get 70 equals 10 h. Then I can divide both sides by 10. And you'll see we get h equals 7 again. The idea here is that you're creating a formula. If you're not working, if you don't have these numbers, in this case we had the numbers, in the first case we also had one of the numbers too. If you don't have the numbers, you create the formula. 
Think of it as like you're working with a team, and you have people working under you. And they have to do this certain calculation every day. They have to do, find the uh, height of a triangle based on base and area, for whatever occasion. Maybe they work in some sort of a carpeting firm or something like that. So you create this formula. Your formula, h equals 2a over b, eliminates the need from them to do algebra. And they just need a calculator and can quickly run through it like this. That's what you're doing for them. Okay? You can think of it that way. A lot of formulas are like this. Okay? When you're working in certain areas, if you're working like us as a mechanic, you know, to understand certain pressures and, and uh, displacement of engines and horsepower and gear ratios, you know, to, have to just have one formula and constantly do algebra sometimes can be very difficult. But if you take a formula and you change it, let's say there's a common thing you're looking for, you can always have it. Okay? So it's making things simpler for someone else. Think of it that way, that way you're trying to do. Okay. So I will talk to you later. Good job, guys. Have a great day.